I never thought I'd replace my beloved BMC road machine. So I didn't. This bike will be joining my road machine. Say hello to the BMC Urs. It just might be the world's best gravel bike. I'm not a mountain biker. I am a brand new gravel biker. I ride like a baby right now. Oh yeah. Two hours and 34 minutes into this bike, so. Like I was saying, this might be the world's best gravel bike. I hope it is because in just a few months, I'm riding this thing up Bolivia's road of death, which is just as scary as it sounds. John Johnson, the founder and CEO of PJAM Cycling, invited me to join him and five others in Bolivia this spring for two epic climbs. And as much as I love my road machine, I knew almost immediately it's not the right tool for the job. Both climbs are full of chunky gravel and steep grades. The finish line of the second climb, Chocolataya, is over 17,000 feet above sea level. That's higher than any point in the continental United States and just as high as Mount Everest Base Camp. A quick Strava stock shows that the locals who race up these roads, they ride mountain bikes. So why did I pick a gravel bike? I'm having a really hard time making this decision because I've been looking on the website. There's like a lot of really good options. So I'm thinking of doing something crazy. Whatever you all choose, I'm gonna do. So this is the post. Oh, it makes me really nervous. Here we go. Oof. Y'all voted for gravel bike. And later my coach confirmed that was the right choice. And the one piece of advice he gave, in addition to use a gravel bike, was put a mountain bike cassette on it. Where can you find a good selection of gravel bikes with mountain bike cassettes? The Pros Closet is not only sponsoring this video, I'm partnering with them this year. And I had a lot of fun digging through their massive catalog of certified pre-owned bikes. They are helping me to make this series a reality. They're gonna send me a bike to ride for the season, but I have to pick out the bike, right? You want me to shop for bikes? Cause I will shop for bikes. So I'd actually place an order for a different bike, but then I saw this. Like I was literally about to go on a ride. You know I love my BMC. <laughs> and I emailed Chris, my contact over there. And I was like, I'm pulling an Audible. Let's do this one instead. And uh, luckily, we caught it in time. He switched the order, thank you, Chris. And here we are. They have a great model where you can buy certified pre-owned bikes. They go through a 141 point checklist performed by an expert bike mechanic. And they don't shy away from showing you the imperfections on the bike. I knew exactly what I was getting. In fact, it even looked better in person than I expected. Ta-da! So I don't name my bikes, I never have, but I think this one has to be called Barney. Oh, look at that. Ooh-wee. You know, it's not that heavy at all. Looking forward to weighing this. It is a very purple bike. Should we? Oh, This attention to detail is really cool. The torque rating on the handlebars is five newton meters, and they have included this torque wrench for five newton meters. Bike is set up, that took Nine minutes, 33 seconds. And that was with me like filming B-roll and, and all of that. Like 8.2 kilos with this thing and the Wahoo mount. Not bad. It's raining pretty hard today, which is so weird for LA. So for today, there's only one thing left to do and that is to make sure this fits on the bike rack. So we're gonna do that. And then I'm gonna have to wait a long time, like 24 hours before I can ride this thing. But for you, very first ride with Barney. I'm just gonna head over to Griffith. I'm gonna ride the one dirt path that's open to cyclists. There's a really interesting history in Griffith between the equestrian club and the cyclists. There's a bit of drama between the two a couple years ago. And basically the compromise was the horses get to go all over Griffith. Bikes are restricted to the roads, like they have miles and miles of dirt paths. I love horses, I got nothing against horses, but I do wish we could ride on them too. You see the dog? <laughs> the bike feels good. Smooth though. Let's talk specs. This is the BMC Urs 011. I guess it's so good they called it number one twice. I mean, it is their top of the line adventure gravel bike. Urs is like an abbreviation or something for unrestricted because they want you to take this anywhere and everywhere, which obviously is perfect for me and my Bolivia trip 
Obviously, it's a carbon fiber frame. You already know the weight. Like 8.2 kilos. But it has a little surprise in the back you might not know. A 10 millimeter suspension dampener. This little dampener surprised me. Immediately, it felt comfortable. All right, I've ridden for like three feet, so it doesn't really count yet, but this thing is super comfortable. Like riding on a cloud compared to my road bike. But I'm getting carried away talking about ride fill. Focus, we're talking specs. The saddle is a WTB SL8. I know nothing about this saddle, but so far I like it. Handlebars are Easton EC70 AX carbon bars. They're 44 centimeters wide, which feels super wide compared to the 38 centimeter bars on my road bike. The drivetrain is a mix of SRAM road and mountain bike components. The levers, brakes, and crank set are SRAM red, which is their top of the line road group set. 180 mil rotor in the front, 160 in the back. It's a one by drivetrain, so there's only one chain ring, and that chain ring has 40 teeth. The rear derailleur is SRAM Eagle with an absolutely massive 11 to 52 cassette. Coach Ryan, you told me to get a mountain bike cassette. I got a mountain bike cassette. Those extra gears are pretty nice when you're uh, going up steeper stuff. We're at like 7% right now. Not like crazy steep, but it's nice to have a few extra gears. Okay, screw it. We're going to mix ride, fill, and specs together. I can't help it. Um, what else? I put my Wahoo head unit on here. I don't have a power meter yet. Hopefully that's coming like tomorrow. Maybe it's already at home. I got a Quark spider-based power meter because I'm running flat pedals. Oh. These are the Race Face Chester pedals. You might recognize them from my Crocs video. I had them on my commuter for a minute and now they found a home on this very expensive gravel bike. Maybe a controversial decision. Let me know in the comments if you think I shouldn't be doing that. But when I was talking to John, the founder of PJAM, and the one running this whole uh, death road trip, I asked him what he was doing. He's running flats. And he advised I run flats. So he's done the road before. And he's a very experienced cyclist. So if he's telling me to run flats, I think I'm gonna follow his advice. But if you wanna be, you know, an internet keyboard warrior, go ahead in the comments and tell me why I shouldn't be wearing flats. And let me know what I should be wearing. Should I be doing the SPD mountain bike? Should I be doing the egg beaters? Should I be doing look keel cleats? The wheels are the super lightweight NVG23 gravel wheels. And you already know I absolutely love the way the free hub sounds. On top of the wheels are Donnelly Explorer MSOs. They're 40C tires. BMC says you can fit 45s on here, but 40s give you a little extra clearance for muddy roads. And coming from 28s on my road bike, 40s feel Incredible, like they are massive in the best possible way. I like these tires. Like good grip, pretty soft. Or supple, I'm sorry, I didn't use the correct bike terminology. It's really strange running big soft tires because I don't care about cracks anymore. I used to be terrified of them. And now, bring them on, baby. Oh yeah, quarter centimeter of air. I feel really confident already in descents. Um, I don't know if that's because the geometry is not that different from my road machine. Head tube's a lot longer. The reach is actually shorter by quite a bit, like almost five centimeters. And that's good. I, I mean, that's good for a gravel bike, right? Puts me in a more upright position, but it feels familiar. It feels a lot like my road machine. And, I like that, I don't need to adapt to a different bike. Although, with the SRAM shifting, I am adapting to that because I just was about to shift into the big ring and I realized, first off, you don't shift with the left for the big ring in SRAM and second off, this is a one by drivetrain, so there is no big ring. So let me switch hands, all right, and now we're gonna shift up. I'm not gonna lie, the color it's a lot. Purple is a bold choice, and I almost didn't go for it. But I took a risk, and after just one ride, I'm already falling in love. Oh. There we go. <laughs> I don't know yet if it's the best gravel bike in the world. I'm definitely not qualified to make that decision. But it might be. What do you think? Did I choose the right bike to climb up Bolivia's death road? Let me know in the comments. And if you are looking for a gravel bike, check out the pros closet for me. Thanks for hanging out. 
Today, in honor of Seth from Berm Peak, we're gonna ride a bike that's a little different from my normal bike, but kind of the same. 